Rugby World Cup game number three, folks, is Ireland taking on Romania, number one in the world, up against number 19. We're going to go through some squads, stats, predictions, and you guys can let us know your thoughts. But yeah, the Romanians are supposed to be well up against it for this one, um, up against what's pretty much a full-strength Irish side. Um, it's supposed to be pretty hot in France. I know uh, all the sides have been trying to do some kind of conditioning training to get used to the heat, but I'm not sure how well... You can get used to the heat when you run around playing rugby union. To be honest, that's a pretty tough one. But uh, yeah, hopefully the weather cools down across the next few weeks over in France. Uh, the Romanians' prep for this campaign, to be honest, has not been great. Losses to the US, who aren't even in the World Cup. Georgia hammered them. And then despite the fact that they, uh, well, they got a red card against Italy. But I guess you've got to keep in mind they had 14 men on the field for the vast majority of that game. So yeah, kind of tough. It's been tough preparations for the Romanians. Ireland, you feel like, uh, are still just kind of cruising. Ireland haven't really hit top gear, despite the fact they're the number one side in the world, which is kind of scary for the rest of us. Uh, but they've got the return of a few players who didn't play last, uh, in that last game against Samo as well, in way different conditions. Uh, it seemed pretty kind of cold and, and wet, which is maybe more what we stereotypically associate with Irish weather. But um, anyway, we'll see how they go this weekend. For Ireland, I mentioned the return of some big guns. you got Andrew Porter, Rob Herring, and Tyg Furlong in your front row. So your two first-choice props. Those guys absolutely need to stay fit. Uh, the, the, I don't want to say downgrade, but you know what I mean. Like Those guys are just on such an elite level. Uh, so we really, really want them to stay fit for the entire World Cup. Joe McCarthy is an interesting one. Uh, he gets the nod in the second row alongside James Ryan, who's up from the bench. Uh, he was kind of singled out in the press conference by the press. They asked about him, and Andy Farrell basically said he's been in good form and he's been preparing well, so he deserves it. So Andy Farrell is a real straight straight shooter like that. I, I love that about him. Like, if you do the work and you play well, you will get a chance to play more rugby. So good on him. Tyke Burns shifts to the back row. Number six jersey, which sends Omani. Switch out one to the seven jersey, and then Kalen Doris retains uh, the number eight jersey, which means uh, Josh van der Fleer. Drops to the bench, but remember he got a start against Samoa, so maybe it's a little bit of kind of managing some minutes in that regard. Um, I mean, Doris has been on fire for quite some time. Now he's averaging easily 30 plus meters a game uh, in his recent games, which is, um, yeah, phenomenal. You know, Tyke Burns going to be stealing ball and winning lineouts all day long. Uh, yeah, there's a lot to like about the Irish four pack. What can I say? Uh, maybe a little bit more excitement in the backs, though, because you got the return of Gibson Park, and more importantly, maybe uh, the return of Jonathan Sexton. It's been a long time since that guy's played a game of rugby, so he will be absolutely itching to go. He's another guy that you kind of want to wrap up in cotton wool just to make sure he doesn't get any knocks and niggles, but he needs game time. He has not played for so long with his injury and with his suspension, so yeah, absolutely needs to. To have a good run, I would imagine he plays, I don't know, 50, 60 minutes. If he can get through that all right, then they'll, they'll probably bring him off maybe even a bit earlier. But uh, definitely he's going to benefit from having a run out. Bundy Arkees back into the 23, plays at 12. He's been showing some uh, some good wide ball skills in recent times as well. So if they can spread the Romanian defense wide, you can expect to see him maybe get in the odd try assist. And then Gary Ringrose, for me, has been one of the kind of form players of the, um, of the Irish kind of warm-up season. Like... He hasn't looked like he's been warming up. He's been look, looking like he's just been in uh, almost top gear already. So he's in at 13. Keith Earls, the veteran on the right wing. James Lowe with the big old boot on the left. And then Hugo Keenan, you can expect a fair bit of running out of him as he looks to exploit some space, uh, is there at fullback. Ronan Kelleher comes back into the 23 on the bench. I will be curious to see what kind of minutes he gets because he's also another one who's had a bit of an injury cloud about him. Lockman and O'Toole, your prop replacements. Ian Henderson drops to the bench alongside Van der Fleer, Murray, Crowley, and Henshaw, who all played in that Samoa game in starting position. So uh, it does seem to be a bit of a management of the game time thing. Uh, they also singled out Jack Crowley as being able to cover a few positions, which maybe gives him the nod ahead of Ross Byrne. Uh, for Romania, I will 100% put my hand on my heart and say I am very unfamiliar with the Romanian side. It's not a not a side that I've seen play much at all. Um, but there are a few notable uh, changes to the side that played in their last game against Italy. Adrian Motok, who's the guy who got the red card, he has been cleared to play. They since kind of mitigated that um, that red card down, so he's not been suspended. They ruled that the uh, the actions of the guy ahead, I think it was Lamaro, 
um, kind of caused him to make it look worse than it was. So uh, he's cleared to play, which is a bit of good news. It's the same front row as what played against Italy, and they uh, they managed to score a mall try against Italy. So the Fords is maybe where it's going to be at, but there's not been a lot of try scoring from the Romanians, to be honest. They only managed six points against Georgia in a game where they got pretty hammered, so that's a little bit concerning. Uh, they've moved Hinkley Valvasa from fullback to number 10, and he seems to be a guy who likes a wee run. He had six defenders beaten against the Italians, as I said, an Italian side, which which dominated the Romanians. They've also shuffled uh, Tavita Manumua uh, to the left wing from the midfield. He had a bunch of run meters, 70-odd, um, and a clean break and five defenders beaten in his last game. So that's pretty impressive. And a team which got hammered by the Italians. Tamani shifts to 12 from 13. Uh, Tangi Mana shifts, so comes into the 23 at 13. They've shifted Onutu wings from left to right, and they've put Simeonescu uh, at 15 for this one. Now, it's an interesting one also when I look at this Romanian squad in that, like looking at the Namibian squad for the previous game, which I am also not that familiar with, a lot of those guys' names I knew from playing in the MLR over in America. Sometimes you see these guys, they play for Pro D2 clubs in France. It's a real mixed bag. One guy plays in Super Rugby, but the Romanian squad seems largely to play in Romania. So I'm not sure if that's a great thing for the cohesion of the squad or if it means that the standard of the squad is a bit lower. These guys aren't getting contracts abroad. But um, yeah, their their preparation for the World Cup doesn't seem fantastic, like I said. So it seems like a pretty bloody tough day at the office going in to start your campaign against number one in the world, Ireland, when you've just been beaten by USA, Georgia and Italy. So yeah, yeah. Uh, We'll make it that what we will. Um, Ireland, man, stats-wise, you know they're going to have a heap of carries. They're going to have a heap of possession. They're going to have a heap of territory. They do that against the best teams in the world, let alone the number 19 in the ranked world, Romania. They're going to pass the, the ball around. They're going to kick the ball. Like This sounds like really basic stuff, but if you look at every team, like every team seems to have, like England kicked the ball a lot, uh, but Ireland's thing is, is like the New Zealand bus tackles and offload. But Ireland, for virtually every category, are either going to be first or second. I think no team, I think Scotland might have had a little bit more possession, like maybe by half a percent or something, but most territory, like second maybe for possession, one of them, I think the most for carries, and then maybe second or third for passes, and same with kicks, and second for kicks, it's just they have that much ball. It's just such a relentless game from them, so... Yeah, uh, the Romanians are up against them. What can I say? Last time they played, if I'm not mistaken, was the 2015 World Cup, where it was 44-10. And by the look of things, the Romanian side since then has um, downgraded a bit, and the Irish have gotten better. Uh, 43-12 back in 2005. And yeah, you guys played each other a lot back in the early 2000s. 2001, 2002, 2003, and 2005. There were matches between Romania and Ireland, which all finished like 43-12, 47, sorry, 45-17, 39-8, 37 3. So, you know, all like 30, 30 odd point wins. But it seems like it could be could be more. Potentially a lot more at the weekend. Uh, it is on at Bordeaux. It, as I said, it looks pretty bloody hot. Uh, Nika Amashikali, the Georgian, is the referee. Uh, 3.30 local kickoff. So it's after the Namibia and Italian game. 1.30 in the morning for me. So I'm really not sure how to plan my sleep. Because... I feel like this game's going to be an absolute drubbing, but I'm very keen to see some of these Irish guys get back into action. Uh, if you've seen the Irish depth chart, you know I'm a big fan of the way um, Andy Farrell has managed the side across uh, the course of this Rugby World Cup. So uh, they are, I feel like, a little bit vulnerable in a couple of positions if they get injured. I'm, I'm going to be sweating on Hugo Keenan as maybe one of the guys. I think uh, he is world-class. Johnny Sexton obviously going to be watching in the two props. In particular, but yeah, assuming those guys stay fit, man, it's going to be a heck of a run. Um, predictions wise, the Irish are predicted by the bookies to win by a whopping 62 points. The rugby forecast algorithm is a little bit more conservative and says 50. That's why I'm questioning whether I watch this one live or just catch up on demand. If you don't see a match review immediately after the game, it's because I've decided to go to bed and watch it in the morning. Um, between now and then, if you want to check out the article I did for Forbes, 
that was a good Rugby World Cup preview. I also talked up the Irish depth, although I think I did tip the French to win it, giving the old 2011 All Blacks vibes, you know, the home side. But um, yeah, predictions are a bit of a mug's game. You can just kind of pull one of those top four teams out of a hat at the moment, seemingly. Uh, also, two cents on tour if you want to see me sweating buckets while eating some hot dumplings while I was over in China. Check out that video until the Rugby World Cup gets underway. you got a bit of time because very soon none of us are going to have much free time. Subscribe to the channel, folks. Take care. Talk to you again soon.